Hello, I am Professor Chad Jenkins, and welcome to Michigan Robotics 102. Uh, today's lecture is going to be on uh, uh, today's lecture is going to be on our on Hello World. This is going to be our first program uh, that we're going to write in C plus um, plus, and this is part of our course on on that is an introduction to AI and programming. And so C plus plus is oftentimes one of the languages that we use to get computers to uh, to run AI programs. And so we want to be able to, to get you to do that. And so we're going to get you up to speed. Uh, and we're going to start by, oops, there we go. Uh, we're going to start uh, by just our, our simple Hello World program. So this is probably the simplest program that we can write in C++. And the, the sole job of this program is to output Hello World to the screen. Um, and so this, this, is, this is all, this is, this, this code will, will is all we really need to, to do this. Uh, but there's a lot of other things that even though it's very short, uh, there's a lot to say about it. And so that's what we're going to spend most of our, our today's lecture doing. Um, the first question that you should really be asking is, especially if you're new to new to, to programming, coding, and, and doing computing at this level, is uh, what is C++? What is C++ exactly? Um, and so there's many resources that online that could help you that help that can help you sort through this. Um, my favorite reference is Wikipedia. I love Wikipedia. It, it really does provide a, a lot of great information. Uh, but if you read Wikipedia, you get more information that you can deal with. There's there's a lot. Uh, there's a there's a lot out there. So I'd like to to boil this down into just just a few points that I think you should really know as we as we go along in this class. And that is C plus plus. Is a, is a high level programming language. And so uh, by high level programming language, uh, there are many high level programming languages out there. Um, C is, is probably one of the, the most widely used. Um, and so when we think about what is a high level programming language, let's start by just, by just thinking about our, um, our computing hardware in and of itself. So when you go out, you buy a computer, you get, uh, you get a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, and you get this tower. Uh, usually if you, if, you get a, if you get like a desktop computer, you get this, this tower right here. And, you know, and that really is the hardware. That's the physical device that, uh, that actually is doing the computing and all the things that are around the, the computing system. If we took that device and we sort of, we sort of, you know, broke it into its components and sort of, you know, like broke it down a bit, um, you know, you'll see that that there are a number of different different parts to it, um, different different components. Um, one of those that that we care about is the is the um, is the main circuit board. Um, on that circuit board, there's a processor. There's uh, there's memory. There's uh, there's in interfaces for devices. Um, but when we're thinking about this main circuit board, there's, we should really, we're just going to abstract it right now and just think of that as the thing that, 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 is, that is the electronics that allow us to carry out, uh, carry out digital logic. So, so in, inside of these electronics, there are, there are these AND gate, there are these, uh, these different logical gates for performing uh, OR, AND, NOR, NAND, NOT, uh, exclusive OR. And so these electronics allow us to carry out uh, carry out digital uh, digital operations, um, and so you know, so so um, so we're just going to assume that that exists there, and and somebody somebody else has built one of those computers, and we want to be able to program on top of it. Um, on top of our computing hardware sits an executable software. So this is a program in binary code. Um, so you should think of this as just ones and zeros. Binary is just ones and zeros. A, a bit of information can take in, take in, can be either one or zero, and we can have a collection of these. And that really is what sits, is what's, um, is what represents the whether an electrical signal is going on or off. Um, and so you know we don't really have to think about that for for all the programming. Just we know we know that there are there's a that we can represent our program in, in ones and zeros, and there is. Um, and you know, and given that, and given if, if we can give that to our computing hardware that they can that it can execute uh, this this program and do something purposeful, um, we should note that this this binary code is is really specifying a sequence of digital logic instructions that run on top of this computer. And so the process of getting of being able to make this the software. I mean, I I can't program in ones and zeros. It's you know it'd be tedious to sit there and just you know tweaking every little one and zero to make your make your program work. Um, and so what you have instead is a is a high level programming language. 
And so when this high level programming language, it's, uh, it's something that's in readable text, something that we can, that, you know, you have to understand the language. So there's a C++ language. Um, but once you have that, you can write text in, in, that's in readable form that people can read. Uh, and then you can compile that. You can, you can turn that into a software executable. And then that executable can then run on your, on your hardware. And so this, uh, and so the, the code that the, the text that we write is called source code. And when we, people talk about coding, what they're typically saying is that, uh, is that writing the source code in, in a language like C++ or some high level programming language is the process of coding. We compile that into, into an executable software and then that runs on our hardware and that produces all the great applications that we're, that we're used to seeing. And so, uh, and so this process of compilation really, you know, C++ is something where we can compile these source files into executable applications. And so the source code that we write in the C++ language is then, is then given to a C++ compiler and that compiler then produces the executable that runs on our, our code. And in this, in this regard, C++ is what's called a compiled language. There, you don't have to do it this way. There's also other languages that are interpreted. So instead of, build, instead of generating executable, source code is then interpreted uh, on the fly to then, to then produce, uh, produce for that, and that produces what's executed on the computer. Instead, what we do with C++ is we have the language, we compile it, we get an executable, and that executable runs. And that's separate. One thing that's great about having uh, having languages like this is that high level languages that they're portable across many different computers. And so, if we think about computers that might be on, that are that are smartphone, our desktop computer, uh, the kiosk that you might see at the grocery store, the traffic light that's that's controlled electronically, our robots are are the same way. All of these are, are computers. And so, if we write a language, and and what we mean by portable is that we if we write uh, a, a program, and then we we have our, our C++ compiler. Uh, there are compilers that will then that can then target each of these uh, each of these different um, the, each of these different computers. Even though these, these computers may be different, may have different processors, different types of uh, components on board. The C++ compiler can then take that source code and then generate executables for each of these each of these target platforms. And so I can write one one program. And it can be, and it can run on many different diverse types of um, types of devices. Um, one note about portability is that, uh, just to, to give an example of this, uh, I just want to show the the example of Doom. So Doom is a video game. Uh, I won't go into what <laughs> what exactly uh, you know what exactly the game's about, but just know that it's a video game that I played a lot because it came out when I was in college. Um, and so so Doom. Pay, you know it it doom is is uh it you know it was it really was uh was uh was um was inspiring for me it inspired me to get into 3d computer graphics which then sort of inspired me to become a roboticist so doom plays a you know it's it's very uh i have such heartfelt regard for for doom um but doom runs on on practically everything and so if you so so um so so if you just took took the um the phrase i it runs doom and you uh, and you put it into Google. Uh, you can get many examples of um, of different platforms that that run Doom. Um, and so this this goes from you know you can get Doom with Doom, which was originally running on a on a x eighty an x eighty six a four eighty six computer, the computers of of the of the eighties and nineties. Uh, it, it that and so even though that was the target platform, it's run on everything: Game Boy Advance. Uh, um, scientific calculators, smartwatches, GPS device, kiosks, oscilloscopes, treadmills, iPods. Uh, <laughs> um, there are so many. Doom has been ported to many different platforms, even though it was written in uh, not not C plus plus, but C, a very you know um, the predecessor of C plus plus. And so one of the things that one of the the ports that I thought was, was most amazing was uh, I saw this recently. It was it's the Doom phone, and so you can have you can get you can play Doom on your on your office phone. And so this this just goes to show that this code that was never written to be played on an office phone can uh, can port to this type of platform. And so you know so C if we come back to it. High-level programming languages we compile it uh, from source files into executable apps, and it's portable across, you know, uh, uh, off, across nearly all computers. Any computer that has a C++ compiler uh, can we can write programs for. Um, not all. In addition, it's one of the most popular languages. 
so if we look at uh, at some of the so there's a there's a, a great video that shows the evolution of computing languages and which ones are most popular. Um, you can see you know by this and there's different rankings, so you can't you know so you can't uh, you can't always just trust one ranking. Um, but uh, but there are many you know there you know so typically at the top there's usually Python and JavaScript and and Java maybe maybe just uh, just below that. Um, and so you know I'm. I, so JavaScript, I love JavaScript, you know, sometimes that will be number one and maybe Java's number two and Python's number three, they kind of go back and forth. Um, but if you look at it, you know, you can see that there are that, that C++, C, Objective-C, uh, C Sharp, which are all sort of variants on, on the, the, the idea of, of the ideas of, of C++. Um, you know, you, if you add them all together, they're up there with the, with those top programming languages. And really one point that I would make is that if you can code in C++, you can, you can code, you can learn to code in any of these languages. It's not, it's not really the language itself that you're learning, it's really computational thinking. And so, so, so really these ideas that we have for C++ apply uh, to many different languages pretty, pretty easily. Um, and so, you know, so, so that is what C++ is, but what we'd like to, to really talk about today is how do, you, how do you code in C++? How do you start to take your ideas and turn them into, into code and making, make them run on computers? And so for that, um, the first step that we, that we do is we have source code like this, and we're gonna type that code into a file, and then we're going to, we're gonna, try, we're gonna get it to execute. Um, probably the simplest way to do that these days is to use uh, an online C++ editor. So I, so W3 Schools, which uh, which has a lot of a lot of great reference material that that I oftentimes find find myself using, um, has an interesting try C++ C++ uh, application, online application. And so what we can do in this is we could go and uh, we can and has a little text buffer right here, and so we can write our source code in, into there. Um, from that source code, we can then press run and the, and on the back end. So they'll take the, that code, they'll go back on, in their systems on their servers. They will do the process of compiling that source code into an executable and then running the executable. And then you'll see the result right here in, to, in, the, in this output buffer. And so in this case, it will just produce hello world. And so in that, in, if we're using this online C++ uh, environment, we can then just see the result of our system and it works. It, it produces hello world just as we're expecting. Um, this has a number of advantages and disadvantages. Um, the advantages are, is that this is easy, quick, minimal setup. I just go onto a web website, type my C++ code and I can see it running. And so, so that's great. You know, it's all the advantages of modern, uh, of, of modern computing. Um, the disadvantages are that I have to deal with advertisements. I, you know, I don't really care about Mailchimp, but they really want me to see. They really want me to see Mailchimp, um, it re, and uh, so I have to deal with advertisements, or I have to pay for for one of these. Um, it requires internet, so I can't. So I pretty much can't be be disconnected from the network. And this, these are usually limited use types of types of systems. So if I want to get this to build on, uh, you know, get this to run on my robot or something else, um, you know, I, I probably can't do that. I have to do something a bit more sophisticated. Um, and so, you know, so this is a good place to try some of the some of the some of the ideas that we're having for C plus plus, and I would encourage you to do that, um, to 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 really see uh, to really see the ideas of the course uh, in action. We're going to have to do something a little bit different. And so, another option is that we could take this code and we can turn it into a into a local file, and we could run it on our own uh, on, run it on our own computers. And so, uh, so here's an example of this. And so. So this is uh, this is hello world on, on on my computer right here. So that's hello world, and it's sitting inside of uh, it's running on uh, on my Microsoft Surface. Uh, that's running uh, an, an integrated development environment called Visual Studio Code, and we'll get into that and definitely in the labs. And that's 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 termed VS Code, um, and I'm just doing it here. And so just to just to to, to show that this is this is my code. That's my that's my cat in the background. He's helping me code. His name is Katari twenty six hundred, um, and so um, so take that for what it's worth. Um, and so uh, so Katari and I we got Hello World working, and uh, and so really what this what this looks like is in VS Code. If we if we look at it, it's an integrated development environment. I can I this the, this text buffer right here. Is what I have for Hello CPP, and I also have sort of a file explorer on the side 
Um, and so this is probably, this is what you're going to be doing a lot of in the, in the course, at least, you know, we support this and we support a number of different environments as well. Um, and so with, with, with hello, with, uh, with, with, um, with, with hello CPP, we can put into a text editor. It doesn't have to be, be VS code. It can be anything. So I'm just going to abstract it. Uh, so, it, so it looks like, uh, looks like this right here. And then, um, from hello CPP, we can save that file and that goes, and that source code then sits on our, our file system. So it sits on our local file system. So we can, we can, from, so from the file system, we can open the file, make changes, then save it back to the, to the file system. And so in windows, you might see it in something like this, uh, like this file explorer that sits right here. Um, a file system, if you're, if you're, if you're wondering what that is, um, a file system is, uh, is, is, is basically what organizes information on your computer. So if you have a storage device, so if we broke out our computer one more time, there is a hard drive and that hard drive stores all of your files, stores all the things that you, uh, that, that are, that you, all the data that's on your computer. Um, and that file system consists of a hierarchy of directories. And so you have these, these essentially folders and inside of those folders, you can store other directories or, and, or you could, or you could store files and your data, the actual data itself sits in those files. And the file system is what manages all of that, all of that together. And so, so once your once your source code is sitting on a, on the file system, uh, we can then uh, take it and we can compile it using a using what's called a compiler. Um, so there's many different ways to run compilers, but we're going to use what's called a command line terminal. Um, and within that command line terminal, uh, and so this is what we're seeing right here. And and, and you know, I won't go into too many too many details about it, but usually it runs. Uh, your command line terminal it allows us to, to type in uh, specific commands, and so one of those commands could use a could can use a compiler program. And so the compiler program uh, that that if you're going to use Windows, you can use a program called G++. So that is the compiler uh, that will compile C C++ programs. Um, that compiler will then take in a, take in a source file, so that will be our Hello CPP program, and then after that we can type dash o. And then we can put the name of our executable, which is going to be hello. So hello will be the, the thing, the, the file that was output from the compiler that we will act, that we can then actually compute, or we can actually then execute. Um, so once we run this, this, this line, we run this command right here, we type it in, we hit return. Um, what we'll get in the end is we'll get an executable. So now you'll see what in our, in our, in our um, file explorer in that same directory, we'll get a file called hello. And that's going to be an application that we can then that we can then run. So if we take that executable, um, and so this is this is uh, and so VS Code, in addition to to, to having uh, to allowing us to to run source files, we can also uh, it also has a terminal. So this is what that compile line looks like for in, within VS Code. And so once we we rerun this, we can we can generate an executable, and that executable is going to be is going to be hello. Uh, we can then run it. So, so when we run it, we're going to run it from the command line right here. Um, dot slash hello just means hello, the hello that is in this directory. Um, and so, so we just want to make sure that the that the command line knows stay in this directory and run this file, help, run this executable uh, called hello. And once we do that, what we're going to get is our program output, which is going to be hello world, which is uh, which is. Um, which is good. Uh, although I realize now I did not include the, the, the exclamation point in, in, in this particular hello file. Um, so there should be an exclamation point there, but, uh, but just, uh, just, you know, suspend disbelief here for a second. All right. So this basically shows us our entire process of we code, we can, we, we save that file to a source code, we compile it, and then we can run that executable. And so if we look at what this, uh, what this would be in terms of an overall coding process is what we're gonna start off with is we're going to have, um, we're gonna have ideas. So we're gonna have an idea for a program. So the, for our first idea was to write hello world. We're, then, we're gonna then open that, open up a C++ file, update our code in, inside of that, that, uh, that source file. We're gonna save it uh, into a C++ source file. Then we're gonna compile, run the executable, and then we'll be able to see the result. And then, um, and then we once we see that result, we can then say, "Oh, well, that was pretty cool. Maybe I can get some more ideas and then build on, build on, and then go and modify my source code again and do this, do this over and over." So one idea I might have is that uh, 
maybe I could pr should print my name that I'm in 102 and do that as well. And so what I can do in my, I can, I can, um, I can change, I can modify my, um, my hello world program. I can go into a text editor based off this new idea that I have, go into the text editor, open my, my hello file, and then modify it such that it's such that I add a new statement that says, Chad is in robotics 102. And so, so now I've made this modification. I can then save that to the, to save that, save that C++ file compile it and then execute it. And then I would get a new result right here. And so this would be my result. I'm gonna just annotate that real quickly. Um, so, so what you'll see right here is I get this new result right here, which is gonna just say, um, hopefully you can see that arrow. I don't know if this actually works in Zoom, uh, but, um, but what you can see is that, um, is that now I get this output that says, hello world, and then I then right after that says Chad is in Robotics 102, and so uh, so now I have that I have that new that 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 my new program, um, and so you know that that's uh, that's nice, but um, but that probably wasn't what I was expecting, and so uh, you know I was probably expecting to be on a new line, right? And so it's to have this be separate separate statements. And so I could have a new idea, which is another idea, which is, you know what, I can improve this by, by, by breaking these two lines up. And I can, I can, so I can break each line by just adding this new line character. So I'm going to, I'm going to add that to my, to my output. Uh, so I'm, that's going to split up these two lines. And so, so once I do that, I make this change, I compile it and execute it. You can see that I get the, I get the right result here. So, so now in, in now in this area right here, I get the right result where I get hello world and then it breaks a line and then says Chad is in, in robotics 102. And so that sits right there. And, um, and I'm feeling good about my, my hello world program. And that's awesome. Um, but you might be saying to yourself, uh, wait, what'd you do that right there? What was that? Um, so you just did those things and, and how did that actually work? And so what's, what's going on in this program? What are, what are you actually doing? And so, so we do need to talk a little bit about what a C++ program, C++ program looks like and, uh, and how you can start to express your ideas in, in terms of these programs. And so let's break down uh, anatomy of, of, our, of our Hello World program that we have right here. So the first thing we should know is that all programs start in this in this main function. So we can declare a main function by saying uh, int with a space, then main, and then uh, and then an, uh, a a open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis. So main is the is the program. So when the compiler is looking through your source file, it's looking for this this function called main, and that is always going to be the start of your of your program. Um, and so in the, within main, so right after top typing main, you're going to put an open open brace. That open brace basically is going to is going to define the start of your of your program, and then go all the way down to this closing brace, right here at the bottom. And so in between those two matching braces, so we call a matching brace an open brace uh, that's matched with a closed brace. Um, within this, within this, these matching braces, you can have, uh, you can put in a number of statements for, for C++. And we define those, those braces, the extent of those braces, everything in there as the scope of the main function. Um, and so within that main function, we can, we can put in two, we can put in a number of statements. And so in this case, we put in two statements. Um, and so the first, and so each statement is a pro is an instruction is a, is a, is a program instruction statements always end with a semicolon. So that tells the compiler, we have, we have made this statement, it's done, let's move on to the next statement. And so, so, these, and so these two, these are, are two statements that we, that we have here. Um, each statement is going to, is going to is, in this case, is going to print something out to the screen. Um, and so if we look at our first statement, it's going to print out to what's called standard output. The standard output is just, is just our screen. And so we've denote that as STD colon colon C -O out, C, C O U T, C out. Um, and so really what that is, is that is, uh, we call that a, a, a uh, an output stream. And, uh, and we're gonna output that uh, uh, to two, two strings. Um, 
one string is going to be hello world. And so, uh, so hello world based. So the string is, is, is given in double quotes. And so anything in the double quotes is considered text that we just want to, won't want to output to the screen. Um, it's hard to express what, how do you break up two lines, uh, what a new line is expressing. And so, so, um, so we have something called special characters. And so, uh, so, the, um, so the slash N right here, um, so it's forward slash, slashing forward, um, is, uh, is slash N basically is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, um, is something that's given to the compiler that says, but when you're given that string, that means that's a, that you should break the line. That is a new line right there. Um, and so what, so we are, we have these strings and inside of them, there's an insertion or a put operator. And so this, so the, so the, um, so the, the, um, the, the double, uh, less than signs basically are, are, are basically tell the, the program to put this string onto, uh, onto standard, on, onto the standard output. And so that's, so when you see that in all three locations, it's basically putting and saying, take the string put it into the, into the standard output, which will make it go, which will make it print to the screen. Um, to make sure that we have access to, uh, to, to standard out, we have to make sure to also include uh, the, the C++ input output stream library. And so this, uh, this, um, this include statement, so pound include, and then the name of the library in, uh, in, in, um, in, in that, that are enclosed in the marker, um, that basically says which library we should include. And so this library includes the standard output library, which, uh, which allows us to, um, to, have, to have this stream that we can then print to the screen. And so this really is the breakdown of our, of our hello world. One thing that's important to note is that statements are executed in the sequential order, in sequential order based on when they appear in the program, which means that if we have, uh, that, that the second statement will always be executed after the first statement. And so, so really your program is going in order based off of the sequence that you, that you give it. And so that's, that's really important to remember. So now that we have, um, so, so now that we, we were able to, to write our, our source code, we can put it all together in terms of, uh, in terms of an overall, and so we can, this is our, our, our way that we're going to, our, that we're gonna establish our coding process. And one thing that's convenient for our um, for for our uh, for for writing programs is what's called an integrated development environment. So in this case, what VS Code is is uh, is an integrated development environment that give that basically puts all of your all of these these different components for for developing your programs together in one application. And so what you have is you have a, you have your um, you have a file explorer that gives you access to to basically navigate all the files that might be in a project or a workspace or on your file system. Um, and then you can open one of those into a into a source into a source file, and so this is a this is going to be your your text buffer for for writing code, and then you can execute that by going down to the terminal, and the terminal gives you access to uh, to for navigating the file system and expressing commands such as G so that you can write your so that you can write your your code, and you can do that interactively. And so, well, some of the labs will cover this in a bit more depth, but you'll you'll get exposure to it. And so, um, so really this, you know, this is how, so in an integrated development environment, you can then just to show that we, you can go through this coding process of, of writing your file, compiling, executing, then getting an idea or realizing that you have, you have to, um, you can make something better and then recompiling, executing, compile again, execute. And you just do this over and over and over until you get the right, till you get the result of the type of executable that you're, that you're happy with. Um, or meets the requirements of our of of uh, of your project. Um, but what happens if you make a mistake? So let's say that we, you know, we did something quite that wasn't quite right. Um, what what's going to happen then? And so let's say, for instance, I did something like I forgot a, a semicolon at the end of a, at the end of a statement, and so that's a problem. Um, and so, you know, what's going to happen in this case is that the compiler, when you go to try to compile, the compiler will tell you that you, that you have, uh, that you have an error. So you go to compile this and the compiler will say, um, this doesn't quite work. Um, I think you, you know, you, um, you, you bait, it ran into, into a brace when it was expecting a, a semicolon. And that basically says that you, that it was, it, that it, for, you forgot something there. And so what you can then do is say, oh, you can look at that 
It will even tell you, uh, it, it will even tell you what line in the code. So if we're looking at this error right here, um, there's a line that will tell you this line, right? So this location right here and in, in hello.cpp, there was an error at line five um, at, at, lo, at location 43, which is, which is essentially this location of our source code. Hopefully you can see that error is not true. Um, and so we can go in and we can say, all right, that, 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 was, a, that was a mistake. Let me go in and, and add my semicolon there. And then, um, and that will, that will then fix my problem. So I can go back at, from compile time, fix my, my error, recompile and get the, get the right result. And errors can take can can take uh, can take several different forms. Um, so um, so uh, let me get back to mouse. All right. And so um, so if I've let's say I forgot instead of forgetting the semicolon, I forgot the the closing brace that scopes my main function. Um, so it's going to then tell me um, you know. Uh, you know what you know there there was something there that, that was missing and so there was expecting a brace and it didn't get one when it ran to the end of file and so we can go there we can go back there and, and try to and try to figure that out um, and fix it um, what if i forgot to declare the main function right um so then it basically says well i you know i i ran into the compiler says it ran into a brace when it was, when it was expecting to see something that i it identified and wasn't there um I could maybe I forgot the I forgot the to include standard the the standard input output library and next this case, um, you know if I did that the compiler will come back with two errors it will say you're you're um, you're using this C out uh, function that's that's that you know from this library that I don't know anything about <laughs> what, what's going on and so so we'll get two errors for each of the times I I mention the C out library. And so I can get multiple errors. And usually what I do is I go find the first one and I fix that and I see if that resolves any of the other errors. And so if I fix this one problem, I include san the standard library, I'll fix uh, all of these other, other uh, uh, both of these errors will be, will be then fixed. Um, what if I just, if I'm just careless, <laughs> I just started typing stuff that I, that I wanted to type. So, you know, so my main function, I just typed whatever, whatever text, because I feel like it and I'm just not, I'm not caring. Um, and so the compiler will come back and give me an error in this case and basically say, I don't know whatever, you said whatever, but I don't know what that means. And so it's not declared, it's basically not declared in the scope of, of the main function. And so in that case, we'll get an error. Um, this one we can fix uh, by, you know, because if I want to say whatever's on my mind, I can, but I just need to comment it because that's not, uh, because that it's not going to be in compliance with the C++ language. And so in this case, uh, I can comment this, this code out by putting, a, by putting two, back, two slashes. Um, and, uh, and so in that case, I can type whatever I want and, uh, and, the, and the compiler effectively ignores this. And so we can, we can comment that out. Um, and so these comments, um, there's two forms of comments. And so comments in general by in C++ are ignored by the compiler and not included in the program. So the comment really is just, you know, it, it's just something that the, the compiler says, you're just typing a message to yourself. That's great. I'm ignoring this and, and I'm not, and it's not expected to, to be part of the executable. So C++ has two different types of comments. Uh, one is a single line comment. So if you put the if you put the double slashes on a line, anything at the end towards uh, anything at the end of that line, before you get to a to a new line character, um, will um, or you get to a, before you have a, a line break, I should say, um, you know that will be considered a single line comment, and everything everything past that is is ignored. Um, there's also uh, multi line comments. So anything that, that sits between these two delimiters, so a slash and an asterisk, uh, then it is ignored until you get to an asterisk and a slash. Um, and then, so, the, so we can have comments that span multiple lines. And so, so I just have a multi-line comment here about our first program and what it does. Um, one thing that you should note is that, uh, that, you know, that one, one thing that we use comments for that's really important is, that, is to just note that, the, that our code, um, that code that you write, you know, can be, you know, there you, is, this is your intellectual property. Um, this is something that you, that you, that you're developing and, um, and there can be, there can be some, some difficulties in, in establishing, you know, what's yours and what belongs to other people and comments are a way to, you know, to help establish what, you know, 
you know, your, uh, the, your work product, in addition to also providing documentation about, um, about what, uh, about what's going to be, um, about what the functionality of the project of the program is and what you're doing at every line. So you're documenting so that, so that people can, under, so if somebody has to read your code, they can understand it. And they can also know that they should be, uh, they should be attributing that, that work to you. And so one thing that we can do, so right now in this code, we've, we've already said that our program, um, our program prints messages to the screen. So hopefully people can understand. Uh, so if somebody had to read this program, they could understand what we're, what we're doing, but we haven't established that this is our, that this is our, our code. And so one thing we can do in that regard is we can, um, we can do a, a couple of things. We can give the, 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 the program a name. So we're going to call it hello world. We can have like a nice sort of single line description of this. And so this is where, so our description is a, a first C plus plus program. Um, and maybe I could say, you know, it, it prints, uh, prints, um, information to the screen. That might've been a good thing to do, but also I can put a license on it. And so, um, so licensing is just a, a really helpful thing to do. Um, and so in this case, this is a copyright of myself, Odess Chadwick Jenkins at the university of Michigan. Um, and, you know, and I license this under the, the Michigan honor, honor license, um, and I can include that in, in, in a, I can include that license in the, in the header of my program, or I could have it as a separate license file that I use when I distribute my code. And so, so, um, so, you know, so, so that license um, can be included in a, in, a, in a separate file. And so Michigan Honor License is, is a license that I just made up. Um, and, uh, but you, but it would be good if, we, but it, for good practice, we're going to ask you to put your license, uh, a license file in your, uh, with, that goes with your code. And so what we're going to ask you to do is, um, is, you know, assert yourself as a, as a copyright holder. And so you can put in your year and, and, uh, and your name and in, in, in the copyright. Um, and in addition to that, um, we're just going to go through some of the clauses. So, so really this license is, you know, is sort of a, a, a mish, is sort of a, a melding of, 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 um, of, of three ideas. Um, one is the three is the BSD three clause license. There's many licenses out there. I just chose this one as a, as something that's very simple. Um, that just basically says that, you know, that if you, if somebody takes your, takes this code and builds off of it, they should, they should retain the copyright notice um, that even if it's a binary form that should still keep these disclaimers and that, um, and, uh, and, you know, and th that basically you can't promote that you're, that you're using this code without the, without the permission of the, the original authors that you're, that you're borrowing from. And this, you know, this fits, uh, this, this fits, but um, it, this fits a lot of the spirit of what we're doing in, 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 uh, in Michigan engineering. But, but we also have to note that, uh, that there, that we, that sometimes when you're doing this for class, you're not redistributing. If the only person you're redistributing to is the instructors of the class for grading. And so we have to, so we're also trying to keep that we make sure that we, that we, um, that we, uh, that we're compliant with the Michigan honor code, um, which basically means that if you're redistributing this code for an academic program, for credit in an academic program, um, that you should, that you're asserting that you have not benefited unduly from, from, from others, you know, that you're within the, the, the honor code of Michigan and the collaboration policy of the class. And nor will you, will you, um, will you provide undue aid uh, to others in, in future classes. And so, you know, this is really just trying to, trying to express the honor code in license form. And additionally, there's also an attribution license. So Creative Commons has a, you know, basically says that you should give, you should give proper attribution to, to people that you, that, that you're, that you're building from. And so, you know, and so I don't, you know, there, this isn't the actual Creative Commons 4.0 license, but it's just, you know, it's, if you're going to use code that somebody else has, has, has developed, or you're going to use, you're going to borrow from their materials, you need to make sure that you give them proper attribution. And so this is something that, that we're, that we're continually striving to do. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to just write code for yourself, or maybe maybe you will, but but oftentimes you're doing it to share your code with the world, and not just with with the world, but also your future self. You're trying to you're trying to do something for 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 the world, for somebody, uh, for other people um, through the through the programs that you write. And so this gets to to one more thing that we we want to talk about, which is how do we start to to collaborate? So if we come back to our to our coding process. 
um, you know, what one some something that we're also going to be able to do is then whenever we make a major change to to our code, let's say we 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 wrote something, we said, all right, I started with hello world. Now I have my hello in a in a state that I think this is a this is a this is a a, a um, um, this is an important uh, change that I just made. Um, and so whenever I have uh, whenever I reach that point, what I might do is then take that file and then commit it to a version controlled repository. And that repository that I might commit it to my local repository that I have that tracks changes. Um, and then I might push that to a remote repository where, where I might be collaborating with many other people that are also, also contributing to, uh, to this remote repository. And the way we're gonna do this is through a version control system called Git. Um, and so what a Git repository does is it stores the history of code changes and allows us also to collaborate with, with others. And so, um, so in, in my case, I created a, a repository, the hello repository, which has both uh, hello.cpp and my license file as well. And so, um, so I want to talk a little bit about version control using Git. Um, and so version control, so Git is just one of, 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 of many approaches to version control, many systems for doing version control, although Git is by far the most widespread, the most widespread in use right now. Um, what version control does in general is what it, it does is maintains a, a past history of changes for your code or any project. So, so it's keeping track of, of, of uh, it's track, tracking changes that you've made over your code. And this history of changes come through commits. And so, so you commit your file to a repository and then the, then the repository basically maintains what the difference was between what you, what was there before and what you committed now. And then says, "All right, I'm going to such such that um, such that both of these are uh, are available, um, and, and also as well as for future changes. So the basic the basic workflow is is that you that you can pull or check out your code from a repository, modify it, and then once you make a, a a significant modification, then you can check in. You can check these code this code back in or commit it to the repository, and the repository maintains this history of diffs uh, of differences." Um, bef between um, between these these check in periods between these commits, and then you can go back and see all of these all of all of your history of commits. And so to just give some some of my own experiences with this, um, you can consider my the the TED talk that I that I gave uh, several years ago. And so this was this was done with uh, with Henry Evans. Um, so we gave a, a TED talk, and so um, so this is this is us sort of demonstrating you know how you could use robots to you know to um, to allow people to uh, to allow people with with disabilities to to who who may be um, bedridden to to be able to explore the explore the world and be a part of uh, and transcend sort of uh, their own physical physical bodies uh, using robotic technology and so uh, so what's notable about this is I'm giving the presentation here I'm I'm in Washington D.C. And uh, my collaborator at the time, uh, Henry Evans, is in Palo, Cal Palo Alto, California. And on the stage, he's using this. Uh, he's he's driving around a telepresence robot, and he's uh, and he's following. He's and he's flying a flying a drone. And uh, to do that, we've got a number of interfaces uh, there for him. And so, what I wrote for him was a uh, in browser a uh, browser based drone control program. And so he's using that to control the drone the drone on screen. Um, behind that is essentially just a, a little, you know, that interface that I have is really just like, a, um, it sits in, it sits in a version controlled repository. And so, uh, so I just, you know, wrote a bunch of stuff. It was really my own personal project. So there, there wasn't, there wasn't, there wasn't that many contributors to it. I think those two contributors may have been me and just, you know, uh, either myself or another person, we didn't really do a whole lot, but, um, but there were seven commits <coughs> and those seven commits essentially can be can be viewed in a history of changes and so um actually yeah the one that's my other collaborator that's alice right um and so so we can see this this history of changes and we can go back to any one of them and we can see what we what we've done and we have just uh messages that talk about what what was a significant change from uh from version to version um, but this starts to become a big issue when you start to have large open source projects and so one of those that i've been a, been a part of is the robot web tools project, and so this is to make uh, app to make uh, network protocols for robots such that they can be used in they can be used uh, you know on in different types of apps and the web and MATLAB and 
uh, Julia and, and, and embedded systems, just all sorts of stuff. Um, and so, uh, so it really is, is sort of like, you know, it's trying to make sort of the TCP IP um, network protocol for, for robotics. And so this is just something that we've done. Um, when it started out, it was just a small number of contributors and, uh, and a small number of commits. Um, but by the time, and, and this really came out in, in 2013, uh, but, but just three years later in, in September, 2016, we had a large number of commits and over 33 contributors. Uh, and so this starts to get, this starts to get, uh, it can get, start to get really big, really fast. And so, uh, so it's grown since then in September, 2017, the number of computers grows and the number of commits grow. It just goes year after year, it gets bigger and, and bigger. Um, 720 commits as of last year. And then, um, and then, you know, I'm, I'm using dark mode these days on my computer, but, uh, but, uh, but, you know, but when I just did a, a screen cap of, uh, of, of, um, of some of, of one of our repositories for Ross bridge, which is, uh, which is one of the main repositories for robot web tools. Um, not, you know, we have a large number of commits over, you know, 75 contributors and each of them in addition to this has issues of things they want, they want to change. And so, so starting to collab coordinate all of these people and all the different code changes becomes a, becomes a really significant issue. And so it just helps when, if somebody committed something that, um, that wasn't good, we can always go back and copy or revert to a past state of the repository in case somebody did something that, that was bad. Um, in addition, we can see the change log as well. So we can see the changes that have been made between consecutive commits. So if we were just like, what, what happened there and what was going on? We can go back and look at these diffs so that we, we can see what, what happened. And so, uh, and so this is really, you know, this does, does a lot of versioning for us, but I just wanna talk very briefly about how does Git actually work? Um, and so what happens is that we have uh, what sits on your local computer and then what's somewhere out in the cloud where, where multiple people can, can, uh, can access it. So on your local computer, there is a workspace and then there's the local copy of the repository. Um, and so, uh, and so, and then that, that, and then, um, and so the, so the work, the directory where you're working so where your code sits and where you compile to, that's your, that's your workspace, your working directory. Um, when you make a commit, it, the, the files that you want to be able to have in the repository are indexed into the index. And then when you make a commit, it's, uh, it's put into this local repository. And all of that sits on your local computer. And once you do what's called a push, then it goes out to somewhere on the cloud, such as GitHub, et cetera. The spaces that we have for this, and so we, if we think about where these where these would sit in terms of your directory structure, so uh, so I'm using both both Unix uh, directory conventions and the Windows convention. So there, so if you're if we're thinking about VS Code, it might be in uh, the C drive users, and then whatever your username is, and then your the name of your your workspace or your repo name, it, it would be sitting in there. So and then the repository would sit on our computer, usually under a subdirectory called dot get and so dot basically means that's a hidden file and you a uh, hidden directory and you should and people don't normally see it and then what sits on your remote server is going to be github it's going to be maybe at github.com or bitbucket.com or gitlab.com or the ecs get get uh gitlab service that's that's on there but for this class because um we're just going to assume github right now and so this sits on the on the remote server just to, 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 to visually show this, that workspace again is your, um, is, is your directory. And so we can see in the file explorer and we also note that we put license there as well to make sure our code is, is licensed. And then what sits that somewhere on the cloud is gonna be you know, that, same, you know, the, that same information, but it's gonna be in our, in, our, um, in our GitHub repository. And so that's going to, that's going to sit there. So what happens is, is that once you make changes and you wanna do a, you want to, to have them reflected in your local repository and your remote repository. You make changes, you make sure to add these, any changes that, you, that, you, that are new, um, you wanna add them and you, that, that puts them in the index so that in those index are the files that are, that are gonna be meant to be versioned. Once those, once, you have, um, once those files are indexed, you can do a commit and the commit will take your files that you have and version them in the in the local repository, and so they'll sit locally. They're not out on GitHub just yet. And so what we have to do is then a push, which will then will push these files to your to your remote repository, and that will make sure that everything is is updated. 
Um, if I know all of my files have been added, um, I can I can just do a commit directly, um, or I could do commit A, which will which will also try to do a, which will also add files uh, that I've specified as well. And if I wanted to pull, so let's say that somebody else made a change remote and they've changed my remote repository, but it's not reflected locally on my computer. I can do a pull and that pull will update the local workspace with changes from the remote repository. Now, the thing is that we have to be careful about is that if they did something that contradicts that, that modifies something that I may have changed, then that creates a conflict. And those conflicts can, uh, you know, require, require need to be need to be resolved. And so there's a whole world of Git that that will that we're not going to talk about right now that will help resolve those conflicts. Um, but hopefully for this class, the level of collaboration we need, we will not introduce conflicts. So this is really all we need to know for right now. There are just some some basic commands that that you can that you can use. And so git add adds a file to a repository. We can commit those changes. We can push and we can pull. So everything I talked about, these are the these are the commands that that can do this. And so now that we now at this point, we have uh, we've we've been able to write our first program. We've compiled it. We've run it. We've been able to make changes to that 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 uh, that code based off of ideas that we we have. We've been able to put the right license on it so that we can we can protect it. We've added document. We've com commented it so that people know what's going on inside of our code. And now we're and we're also able to um, to share it on Git. We're able to version our, our 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 code so we can come back to it if we make a mistake and we can share it on GitHub. Um, so now that we have all that all that that uh, that knowledge behind us, we can then meet. We can then try our first challenge, which is Project Zero. Um, which is going to be uh, a pocket calculator. We're going to develop a pocket calculator, and that pocket calculator will then lead us into into doing things with uh, with robots. Um, so this will make sure that we have have a solid grasp of C plus um, plus. And so the, just think about what it, what your what your basic you know calculator looks like uh, like looks like these days. And so um, we're going to talk about that a bit more. Um, next lecture. It's actually, our calculator is not going to look like that. It's actually going to be a command line calculator that we'll use in the terminal. So, um, so, but we'll be able to do, you know, operations so we can do addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we'll be able to comp compound those together uh, in a way that, in, in the way that you, you expect of, uh, of any sort of calculator that you get. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to have to start going through more, more features of the C++ language. Um, and, uh, and so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off next lecture uh, by talking about operators and variables and how we can, uh, and how we can start to get, how we can start to do uh, arithmetic and storing the results of those arithmetic in, um, in, in, in our program. And so with, with that, um, thank you very much. Looking forward to the next class.